When I arrived at the Edmonton Journal almost 25 years ago, I had no idea how much Ken Orr could have taught me about our job and his passion for it. Unfortunately, I thought that this white-haired, 53-year-old veteran photojournalist wouldn't be able to teach me a thing about photography. Much like many young photographers today probably think of me now that I am a similar age. Ken and I were friends during his years at the Journal, but we never became that close during that time, perhaps because of the age difference, or maybe because I was interested in sports photography at the time, and Ken had moved on to shooting more feature-related work at the paper. What I did learn from Ken while watching him work was how to treat people. It didn't matter who was in front of his lens, they were always treated with respect and dignity, regardless of who they were. Although I lost touch with Ken in recent years, I was fortunate that he and his wife Pat opened the door to their home and to Ken's hospice room during the last three weeks of his life, as I helped out our former boss and journal photo editor Steve Macris work on Ken's obituary. During our visits, Ken spoke fondly about his life as a photographer and some of the historical events he had witnessed during his career. Ken's love of history made him perfect for his job, as he saw himself as a visual historian. His keen memory was only slightly dulled by the large doses of painkillers that kept him comfortable as he lay in bed during our first visit. Even in this state, he was still able to rattle off the date of one of his first jobs at the Journal, when he went to Rogers Pass to photograph then Prime Minister John Diefenbaker as he officially opened the Trans-Canada Highway on September 3, 1962. Then in the next breath, he talked about another job photographing President Lyndon Johnson and Premier W.A.C. Bennett meeting to ratify the Columbia River Treaty in September of 1964. Ever since I've known Ken, he has always been a modest man, and during these interviews with him, Pat would often pass notes to us suggesting we ask Ken about a certain event in his career. One such event was a 1987 tornado in Edmonton. Ken loved to fly and even had his pilot's license. So when the tornado hit, he was quickly dispatched to the airport to go up with another pilot to take pictures of the devastation, only to have to quickly come back down as another weather system moved in. After waiting that system out, they went back up and Ken was able to capture the image that ran on the front page of the journal the following day. During our visits, I also discovered that, that while most of us at the journal knew Ken as a gentleman photographer, he was not always that way. He described himself as being a bit of a hothead in his early years. This was certainly not the Ken that any of the journal photographers of the last 25 years knew. But as much as age mellowed Ken, I believe that the love of his life for 31 years, his wife Pat, also played a role in shaping the gentleman photographer we came to know. Although Ken was almost double the age of most of the younger photographers in the department, he was also one of the first people to sign up when the newsroom decided to field a team to play in the local media slow pitch league. Ken told me in the weeks before he died, Boy, do I miss those good old days and the tournament in Red Deer. We had a good team and lots of camaraderie. While I'm not so sure about the good team part, there's no doubt that the camaraderie in our department made for a great place to work. When Ken retired, some of that camaraderie left with him. It was interesting to see how, in the final days of Ken's life, some of that closeness that was once a big part of our department returned as we all got together for lunch to see Ken. And although Ken was too sick to join us that day, the rest of us still met to rekindle friendships with some people we hadn't seen in years. Shortly after Ken died, the fellowship continued as photographers organized a dinner to celebrate Ken's life. One of Ken's co-workers from the early 1960s showed up, as well as other retired staff and their wives, along with all the current staff photographers. We showed up to laugh and remember Ken. What I will always remember about Ken is he had the power to bring our department together, and that skill continues. We will all miss you, Ken, but we will be forever grateful to you for showing us the importance of being the gentleman photographer.